Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, after Tony Ferguson fighting Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson losing to Chandler, and DC kind of going on, <clears throat> Tony Ferguson saying that he's a shell of, of, of his former self, that he's not who he used to be, and I, I really wanted to talk about, one, why people are saying these things, why people think these things, two, do I agree, do I think Tony should retire, or do I think he should keep going? Let's look right into that, let's check it out, we're going to do some looking around or whatever, but... Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Helps out the channel so so much. Give it a thumbs up as well. And most important, out of anything, if you don't do the first two, leave a comment. Let's talk about it. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So, Tony Ferguson, as we've seen, came into the UFC on the with the Ultimate Fighter, beat Ramsey Ninja, and he beat Ramsey Nin Ninja when he was ten and two. 10 wins, 2 losses. The other ones were exhibitions, so of, unfortunately they don't count. Um, either way, it really doesn't matter. But yeah, beat Ramsey Ninjum. Not too much of a competitive fight. Ramsey Ninjum's creative, awkward. Chin's always been questionable. Then he fights Aaron Riley. Beats him. Aaron uh, breaks his jaw or whatever, jaw injury. And then he fights Eve Edwards. And... This is how long I've been watching this. I mean, I remember watching that fight live and hoping that Eve Edwards wins that, won that fight. Man, but yeah, I, I was hoping Eve would win that fight because he was an older fighter. Uh, I realized even back then that if he loses that fight, it's probably the end. And I believe he fought two more times, Eve Edwards did, and then retired. Maybe one more time, honestly. But... Yeah, competitive fight. I think he won 29-28. Uh, I think he lost the second round, but he won the first and the third. And that's still not the start of Tony Ferguson. And he's 3-0 and at that point. Okay? So then, he's supposed to fight Dennis Hallman, as we see. He's supposed to fight Thiago Tavares, which would have been... The Dennis Hallman fight would have been a beatdown. But the Tavares, uh, Tavares, Tavares fight would have been real fun. But fights Michael Johnson. In 2012, loses a decision. I believe something was injured with Tony in that fight. I can't remember. I think there was an injury, but either way, loses that fight. And that was a big one for Johnson because that was when Johnson was coming on. So he's out for a little while. Comes back a, about a year later, fights Mike Rio, beats him by Darce very, very, uh, you know, under two minutes in that fight. Then he fights uh, Consorio Canuno, Kikuno, very shortly after. Beats him by knockout. Supposed to fight Danny Castillo, which, again, would have been a real fun fight, but I think Tony would have beat him up. Fights him, <laughs> beats him by split decision, which, good for Danny Castillo. Uh, and then he fights Abel Trujillo, that piece of shit. If you don't know about Abel Trujillo, look him up. Look up. Look what a piece of crap he is. Look it up. Beats him by a uh, rear naked choke in the second round. Supposed to fight Yancey Medeiros, which again, one of a freaking fun fight. But with Yancey's problems with the ground game, I think Tony would have went through him as well. Fights Glayson Tebow, who's who's known for being huge, strong, questionable chin at times. And but the one thing we know he's good at is his ground game. He's so good. And what does Tony do? Ran through him. Ran through him. Unbelievable. And then fights Josh Thompson. Beats the living crap out of Josh. And Josh is really good. Then he was scheduled the first time to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. Nurmagomedov doesn't happen. So instead, a month later, or no, same when he was supposed to fight him, fights Edson Barboza instead. What a freaking uh, fight that was. If you guys haven't seen that fight, unbelievable. You guys need to go watch it. It's awesome. Then he's scheduled to fight Michael Johnson. Doesn't happen. Supposed to fight Khabib. Doesn't happen. Supposed to fight Michael Chiesa. Doesn't happen. Instead, he fights freaking Lando Venata. And that first round, honestly, was Lando Venata's coming out party. Like... People are really, really rough on Lando. I don't really know why. 
because besides the Charles Jordan fight, the guy goes out there and puts his chin, puts his body on the line every single time he fights. He, he may not have the greatest record, especially after starting 8-0, but he's fight, when he fights, he's, he's, it's wars, man. It's wars. You know, either way, that's another time. But beats Lando, Darce Choke in the second, after getting almost finished in the first round. Then he fights RDA, Rafael Dos Anjos, beats him by decision, and I think he won three out of five rounds, but closer fight than you would think. Supposed fight could be again for the third time. I believe this is the third time. Yep, third time. Doesn't happen. Fights Kevin Lee instead. And didn't he get, yeah, I think he got hurt in the first and then got mounted and still came back in the third to triangle him and win the interim title. Then scheduled again to fight Khabib Nurmagomedov. Doesn't happen. Fights Anthony Pettis instead. Okay, first round gets dropped, comes back, and, and really is turning it on against Pettis in that second round. He granted Pettis hurt his hand, but it, it was a fun fight. Fights Cowboy on a very short notice fight for Cowboy, but of course Cowboy takes it. And first round, there was chances for Cowboy, there was chances for Ferguson, uh, back and forth first round, in between, uh, what? Yeah, in between the second and the third round. The second round, Tony was coming on strong. But in between the rounds, Cowboy blew his nose, his eye puffed up. There was a punch after the bell in between the second and the third that Tony had landed um, that like uh, broke Cowboy's nose or at least broke it more, whatever. And then Cowboy blew his nose. And that was the end of that fight. Scheduled again to fight Khabib. Doesn't happen. Scheduled against Justin Gaethje doesn't happen and then a little bit later This is where we start seeing the down the downtrend. He fights Justin Gaethje and Gaethje has a performance of a lifetime uh, Again wasn't really preparing for Gaethje was preparing for Khabib a lot of wrestling stuff like that You know, I don't think anybody could have expected Gaethje to put on the performance he had Tony did hurt him at the end of I think the third round dropped him uh, in the bell ring, but not really, you know, yeah, he took a lot of damage in that fight. He showed how tough he was, but he was always still just going, you know, to get Gaethje. So, loses that one in the fifth round. Fights Charles Oliveira. Doesn't really get beat up, but gets controlled on the ground. So, there, that was where it was like, I don't understand why he's, he's on his back like this. Like, Oliveira's good. Dariush is good, too. That's is the next fight. Kind of the both same fight, besides Dariush doesn't go for, like, a submission. He just controls him and beats him up. He does have his back a, a little bit, but he's just kind of controlling him. And the, the concerning thing in those two fights were that Tony really wasn't trying to get up. He really wasn't trying to explode out like we had seen in the past. He just kind of accepted those positions. Um, then, so that's three in a row. So then he fights Michael Chandler and hurts Chandler multiple times in that first round does get taken down but he's throwing his elbows he's at least fighting off of his back which we hadn't seen him do against Darius or Oliveira we hadn't seen that so he's beating Chandler up close first round because Chandler gets the takedown but he gets the takedown and Ferguson's lighting him up with elbows he's punching him he's smiling having fun and then the second round comes and Chandler throws a Hail Mary something that nobody could have planned and connects on Tony and face plants him. Brutal KO, sucked to see. Then, that was, um, what is that, January, February, March, April, January, February, March, April, May, May 7th, when he got KO'd. Supposed to fight uh, the Leech. September 10th, doesn't happen. Fights Nate Diaz and loses by guillotine. In a competitive fight, Tony was having a lot of success standing because a lot of people are going to. Uh, just because of Nate's stature, you know, he's he's able, he's okay with taking a punch to, you know, receive a punch to give a punch type deal. And, uh, has, again, Tony has his moments. I was worried because it's only been four months and three days since he was KO'd by Chandler. Nate Diaz was a better fight for him to take because of that. I didn't like the Leech because Leech has 
big, big power in his hands. I didn't like Tony fighting somebody who had that big of power because Tony didn't accept to take that time to heal his, his, his brain, his chin, and I didn't like that. So fighting Nate was a little bit more of a relief. Um, Nate wasn't preparing for Tony. Tony wasn't preparing for Nate. The difference was when Tony uh, shot in on him, Nate was preparing for someone to shoot in. He was preparing for that guillotine. He was preparing to submit off of his back. So, and Diaz set it up nicely and all this stuff, but and you can't say the corner. I've heard a lot since this fight has happened that Tony messed up. He listened to his corner and all that. His corner wasn't telling him to take Nate down blind. That's not what happened here. Nate Diaz put the pressure, put a combination on him, and made Tony make the mistake of shooting. This is not his coach's fault. He did not try to, try to take Nate down because his coach said, hey, look for the takedown, all this stuff, try to get him down to the ground. No, no, no. Nate forced Tony Ferguson to take a unjustice shot, uh, a, a takedown, try to get a takedown when he didn't throw anything behind it. He didn't try to set it up for a takedown. He, didn't, he just threw a blind takedown. Uh, so... It's not the corner's fault, it's Tony's fault because he chose in that moment as he's getting punched in the face to try to take him down. It's not his corner's fault. We, we got to stop doing that. Now, Tony, I just I just listened to the interview with him talking to Brett Okamoto and he was saying that I shouldn't have taken him down. I was having success on the feet. And that is successful on Nate Diaz's part because Nate is the reason why he took him down because he got him against the cage beat him up to a point where Tony thought he needed to take him down. Now, did he think it was going to be easier because his coach was telling him, hey, look for the takedown? Maybe, but again, that's not why in that moment he took him down. That's, that's not why. So, again, that is five in a row that he has lost, okay? So he lost to Gaethje in a fight that he wasn't preparing for Gaethje in the slightest. Did drop him in the third round, but most of the time got beat up. Fought Darius and Oliveira the next two and doesn't win around, and he's just basically controlled. Oliveira tried to break his arm. Yes, couldn't get it. Again, controlled him. Dariush controlled him. So that's three, and only one of those he took big, big punishment. Um, then fights Michael Chandler, has a lot of success in that first round. A lot of success. Does get taken down, but he at least fights off his back, which we hadn't seen in the previous two fights. Then fights Nate and has a lot of success, just makes a mental mistake and gets submitted. He's been finished three out of the five times, but I don't think that's enough of the story because the Gaethje fight, he dropped Gaethje when he wasn't preparing for Gaethje in the slightest. Neither was Gaethje. Great performance by him. Uh, I don't think you should look at his record or the performances, the last five, and be like, well, he's lost five in a row. He's been finished three out of, three out of five of them. No, 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 that doesn't tell the story of what was going on. What is going on in those fights? Gaethje was, is the worst one. It's the worst one by far because of the amount of punishment that he took. Unbelievable toughness in that fight. Oliveira, again, gets controlled, gets beat up. Doesn't, doesn't take a whole lot of damage in that fight. Darius doesn't take almost any damage in that fight. Chandler, he took damage, but that was getting hit with a baseball bat, you know, when in a fight that Tony Ferguson was winning. You know, I, I, I just, I don't think it's fair to us to say that Tony should retire. I don't think that's our choice because on paper, the five losses look bad. On paper, three losses are finishes. Yes, that looks bad, but go watch the fight. Go watch the fights. I don't know, stupid thing. Uh, go watch the fights. Go see for yourself. He's not, the only fight that he really, really gets beat up in is the Justin Gaethje fight. And both of them took on took it on short notice when they weren't pairing for each other. And Gaethje came out, had a better game plan and came out and won the fight. Okay, again, Alvera, all and all of these guys, it's nothing to hang your head on. I don't think Tony Ferguson should retire. 
I do agree with Brett ok Okamoto that he should. This next one is is huge for Tony Ferguson's career because if you lose, typically you lose five, you're probably out in the third one. Uh, but again, they're all have been competitive at, in, in some capacity. Uh, we definitely have seen improvements. I don't like Tony fighting at 170. I just think there's a speed disadvantage. Um, and unless he's going to start just trying to take people down and using his ground game, I don't think that's a good option. I like him at 155. I just think he's more explosive. He's fast down there, has power down there, and he's really, really good at getting those submissions and scrambles down there 155. Um, but, yeah, again, I don't think he should, retire. he should retire. I don't think he's done. I don't think he's washed. I just think he needs. there's things that he can improve on, and having a new team like he does is going to help with that. We've seen Tony come back. We've seen him. He, he lost three times before, and I believe... Only, only one time in the uh, UFC, but still, I mean, I don't. He's not done. I'm very excited to see his next fight because, like I said, when he fought Chandler and he looked as good as he did in that first round, and then he gets caught, you, you just get caught sometimes. You just get caught sometimes, and you can't. Sh you, and, and the Nate Diaz fight was a fun fight, but the loss, you can't say it. It means a whole lot. Just because of the fact that Tony wasn't preparing for him, uh, Nate was preparing for a, uh, a wrestler for five rounds, and it just worked for Nate because of what Tony ended up trying to do, trying to take him down blindly. Um, but yeah, I don't think he should retire. I, I, you know, now if he starts fighting lower competition and gets finished. Then there's some issues because he's not finding high level guys. Charles, Ol Justin Gaethje's Charles just fought Oliveira for the title. Uh, Benil Darius is fighting uh, Mutas Gamrock, I believe his name is. God, name my eye. And uh, he should be fighting for the title soon too. He's so good. Chandler fought uh, Oliveira just a little bit ago for the title. Nate Diaz is Nate Diaz. So these five losses are against top tier, top three guys. Besides Nate, ranking-wise, but Nate's a monster. He's so good. Either way, I don't think he should retire. So please stop saying that. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, you know what it is. Peace.